and welcome to Turnbuckle Tea Talk. You're joined by me, John Duggan, and the main man himself, uh, newly married, Kieran mm. Cooper. What are you being called now? Is it Kieran Hex Cooper? Or Kieran no, Cooper no, Hex? Kieran Cooper, uh, but the missus is now Molly Cooper Hicks. Did you know what I changed yours? <laughs> I, I, wanted her to, I wanted her to be a, a, a full Cooper, but she didn't want that. And if you know my family tree, it's probably for the best. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so we've not been on for a while. We've had like one episode in about four months. There's, there's um, a lot going on. I know. We've been quite busy. Uh, obviously, kieran has been organising his wedding, trying to get me in order. Um, and yeah, we just took a little break, but we should be now back in the swing of it. Um, got some ideas of stuff to do, so. But as always, we will have tea talk. And then as always, if you go and grab a drink and drink along with us. I haven't got tea today, as it's our first tea talk back for a while. Clink, clink. Uh, so where do we start, Kieran? Should we just get well, the wedding out of the way? Um... <laughs> Let's start with the new, the new episode of uh, Dark Side of the Ring, because <laughs> oh my god, what an episode! Like from start to beginning, it, there's just so much going on, so much information thrown at you, mm. and lots of doesn't even, doesn't even get covered. Like for example, the Bot Lesnar incident. Skip yeah, after. Ken Bros. I feel. I mean, I like Dark Side of the Ring. I feel it's very anti WWE though. Mm. So if you don't know what it is, it's basically um, it's a series um, on Vice, but it's also on YouTube. You can see the four episodes on YouTube, mm. and it kind of um, reveals the the truth, you know, truth, whatever you want to call it, um, behind, behind, behind famous stories, isn't it? Yeah. But with this, with this playing right to hell, I think there is obviously there is some truth. But like you said before, there's there's been two plain. Two yeah, plain so was, we've obviously talked about it because I was like, this is very confusing. Now, I think, I mean, it was early two thousands, so you know, wrestlers then are a lot different to they are now. So they're on all sorts. They could drink as much as they like. Um. I mean, they were filming the next day. Do you know what I mean? They were on a roll the next day or whatever. Um, so their memory of it is quite hazy. Now, when you're talking about something 20 years ago that happened when you were drunk, I feel like your memory is not going to be the best on what actually happened. I'm not saying stuff in it that said didn't happen. I just think it's not probably how you think it happened. If that makes so sense. There's the on Stone Cold's podcast, he's interviewing yeah. the Undertaker, Mark Holloway, and they were saying about when Vince and Kurt Angle had a wrestling match. Mm -hmm. Undertaker walked up and said, Oh, hell no, and you know, put Angle in a chokehold that was never mentioned in that documentary. And f from what you, from what I gather, you think that's another plane ride to hell. So, the one on the documentary. The plane ride from hell they're talking about is 2002, where The Undertaker and Stone Cold conversation from 2001, because they're talking about when... Um, so there's a match between Stone Cold and Undertaker, and he's he nearly rips Undertaker's ear off during the match. Yeah, yeah. He, I mean, he does rip it, it just doesn't come off, and he's bleeding quite badly. And then Undertaker says, like, he was holding his ear the whole flight, he was killing him, and he fell asleep holding his ear kind of thing. And they woke up and Vince McMahon and Kurt Angle were wrestling each other. Um, now Stone Cold calls us the, the... Stone Cold says that, uh, that was a flight from... They call it a flight from hell or whatever. However, that was 2001. The year before the one talked about in the documentary. So do you think the dates like are mixed up? Or do you think there's two? No, I think... <laughs> This is the thing, so in the 
it's really confusing talking about it. The doc says that the ring documentary says that Vince McMahon was on the flight. However, I've heard some people come out, like Coachman came out and he said Vince McMahon wasn't on that flight. He was everyone's because he said everyone's thinking about the time that he wrestled Kurt Angle, but that was the year before. I know for a fact he wasn't on that flight because I was on that flight and he wasn't on it. They didn't interview Coachman either, which is strange. However, but as well... Some people might not want it to be on it. Um, with the Michael Hayes thing, so he got his drink spiked, something that's not mentioned in the documentary. It's apparently, you know, he... Allegedly. Well, I've heard, you know, you get these shoot interviews and someone said about Michael Hayes on the plane flight to hell, whatever it's called that he exposed himself in front of Linda McMahon and right. started, started urinating in front of her. But obviously because he was, he'd been hate bombed, which they talk about in that. Hate bombing I've heard about before. I don't know if you have, Kieran. Loosely, so it's... it's they, could do a, they could do a whole new episode on that because that involves the Rockers, which one of them is Shawn Michaels. Whether they do an episode of that, I don't know. But I've heard a lot of interviews where they say that Shawn Michaels used to do it to girls all the time. So basically, that drug is this kid um, legal. It's a painkiller. Yeah, it's yeah, a pain after killer. doctor, but it's, it knocks you out when you can't sleep. Mm. And so, I can't remember who it was was saying on the documentary that it's some people he know has used it on girls. He didn't say who. Whether there's a wrestler or just a member of the public, I can anything. guess. I can guess who he's talking about because I've just said it. <laughs> oh uh, there'll be a reason to say his name, but honestly, you only have to go on YouTube and put H bombing in, and there's one wrestler that will come up. But see, now this is where for me <laughs> there's blurred lines because if Michael Hayes urinated and exposed himself in front of Linda McMahon, you've seen Vince when he gets on a sheet where he's angry. Think about like where Rumble where John Cena and Batista went out at the same time. He yeah. was livid, storming down. If he, if Michael Hayes did that in front of his wife, Vincent Mann would knock ten bells of you know, out of him. So is that well, yeah. I mean that it's kind of out of character for Michael Hayes to do that also the winter. So they may give him the benefit and more likely I'd reckon Vince would be angry at whoever dropped the thing in his drink. There's not some of it I just think is a bit like I said, <laughs> you know, 20 years ago they were drunk, the memory's a bit, you know, a bit hazy. Excuse the, the pun. I mean, we've not got to yet. The Ric Flair thing. Yeah, no, okay, that is. In my head, I am so conflicted between two opinions on it. I don't know where I'm at with it. So I'll tell you where I'm at. Because I think I know where you're at, but Ric Flair is a showman. Mm -hmm. When he did the, you know, when he did the ESPN 30 for 30 documentary, Ric mm -hmm. Flair, just, he loves being the, the high flying, the walking, talk, you know what I mean? He loves being that like, kind of flashy guy. And I think on the plane, he was just jogging around. He, was, he wasn't trying to, even though the flight attendant, flight attendant said, I don't think he was trying to rape me. You know, he was mm. just kind of being, you know, like the way he is. Still doesn't make it right. It's she can, well, it does not make it right in the slightest. No, no. But I think it was more of a joke um, mm. on Ric Flair's side. But obviously this <laughs> has not has not seen it as a joke. So therefore it has to be taken seriously. Whether mm -hmm. Ric Flair is doing it as a joke or not, she didn't, so that's where the line was crossed. Yeah. However, so here's where I'm at with it. Don't um, get us taken off the air, Joe. <laughs> 100% probably believe that story as it happened. But, I mean, you'll know this, working in a bar. When people are really drunk, they're an absolute night. They're like toddlers. They really yeah. don't control themselves. And I've seen, I mean, I've worked in my life, I've seen some sites and some mm -hmm. things happen that you're like, why is this happening in front of me? But imagine um, as well, you're hyped because you've just, you know, you've just done a pay-per-view in Europe. Also, I mean, I don't know 
I'm guessing you don't really drink behind the bar, do you? Mm. When you're like sober and someone's drunk trying to have a laugh, sometimes at your expense, you don't always see the funny side. And I think that's a bit what's happened as well. But what I was thinking today is trying to, not graphically, but trying to imagine what happened. Because he's saying that he was telling her to touch her. Was it, or was he just going, do you want to touch it? As like him thinking he's funny. Yeah. Because as well, so there's a, it's so conflicted on the WWE network because Rick first told a story about being with, I think, six air stewardesses and they made it into a cartoon. Yeah, I've, uh, yeah, I've seen that. So, right. They've now taken it off. Peacock's got word of that and took it off. I mean, it's still out there. You can find it. Now, as well, that's why I'm so conflicted because you think what WWE was like at that time, and I, I can imagine that's what the culture was like. No, I'm not saying that's right. That yeah, would be what the culture was like. They, they weren't, they weren't exactly, you know, um, respectful to women at that time. Well, Even on TV, they weren't. Yeah, on TV, they weren't. So I can yeah. totally believe that's what happened on the flight. Ric Flair's probably, I'd imagine no one's ever called him up on it. And yeah. that's why he probably keeps doing it. So you've brought up two good points. Um, they do this thing on the network where they tell stories, but in a cartoon form. Story um, time, it's called. Story time, yeah. So Ric Flair's And they talk the about, so there is a story time about Vince McMahon wrestling Kurt Angle. Yeah, yeah. But I'm sure on that they don't say it's the plane ride from hell. Well, the the, the one that you were talking about before, the player comes out of his robe, but naked, you know, apart from his robe, and the flight attendants are like, "Oh my god!" And the flight yeah. attendants are on him, you know, hugging him and kind of caressing him, and it's you know, it's very mutual, you know, it's consent, and the women mm. are loving it, he's loving it, you know, um, so. It's obviously he's done this before, so I can completely believe that he's done it before. Yeah. Um, well, I've heard, like, um, Tony Schiavone's told stories about Ric Flair in the same sort of elk. I mean, it was told on the, the 30 for 30 documentary they talked about it, how yeah, he was yeah. constantly just exposing himself. Yeah. Fully ready to go. Sting talks about it on the documentary. Yeah. I'm not disputing that's what he did I'm just thinking I don't think he was I mean we're all we are all totally PC now and it, I think if it happened now well it wouldn't happen now I don't think anyone would allow him to do yeah. that but a nice segue different. onto that is that to the day it happened well the day after it happened on Raw was the day they changed the WWF to the WWE yeah it was getting it out on that day, which is quite a symbolic method, um, that kind of, you know, m metaphor, because f before then, there's yeah. a famous um, clip where DX had toned some girl to lift her shirt up, mm -hmm. you know, in the audience. Yeah. And now it's all like families and, you know, it's all kind of caged towards, you know, the family entertainment. Yeah, definitely. I think as well, I've said to you, well, yeah, like, if you watch this week's Raw, it's so family-oriented now, it's, I just think, why am I watching this? I'm a 34-year-old man and I'm watching this and it's clearly aimed at, like, six-year-olds. And to flip that over, <laughs> um, when we watched pay-per-view at my house or whatever, well, this was years ago, mm. there used to be a bras and panties match on. Yeah. So the way you win the match is just you pull off the uh, opponent's clothes until she's in a bras and knickers. It, it used now, to I be a game thing. mode. It used to, you buy a wrestling game. It used to be a, a match you could play. But that's the moment that we all, me and my brother, used, used to go to the toilets because we thought <laughs> it's just stupid. <laughs> um, but yeah, it's just a different yeah. era. Um, There's a few the, things as well, though. The, the ramifications of what certain wrestlers got and Ric Flair got away with everything, baffles me. 
I said this to you before. JR yeah. says it. He was a he. Was, I, he goes. I don't know a better phrase, but he's a made man. Why? Why is he a made man? You've got well, Scott Hall who got spikes, doesn't know any better. Um, they had to take him off in a wheelchair because they can't wake him up. They said that he had some kind of uh, illness, didn't they? Yeah. Because he had given a so, passport. I mean, I, I get Scott all of these problems at the time. However, that wasn't his fault. Yet he got fired for that. Yeah. For having his drink spikes. Gold got, Dust. Gold Dust got fired as well, I think. He ended up going to TNA. Mm hmm Again, what, what really? What did he do wrong? He was singing on karaoke. Well, he was heartbroken, and I think that's <laughs> generally, honestly, I think that's, that's such a sad story. Yeah, but what? I don't understand. When they tell that story, I'm I'm watching it. I'm like, right, so you sing karaoke on the thing? Like, it's not like there was other people on the plane. They're all wrestlers. It's all like his work friends. Yeah. Why is that like even br being brought up? Well, you said, you know, what has Ric Flair got on Mince McMahon, which was interesting. Yeah, because it's not the first time he's done something and he's not being punished for it. Because mm. as I said to you, the famous one is when they were at a, was it a game lunch, something like that? Yeah, it was 2K. And he came on, he was, he was absolutely hammered. Yeah. And it was JR's job to keep him in line. And because he came on hammered, JR lost his job and Ric Flair... Yeah carry on getting paid by WWE. Yeah. But what's that? So there's big fallout from that because Tommy Dream is also one that's got kind of blamed for giving... I find it strange. Uh, honestly, we've talked about cancel culture and stuff. All he's done is give his insight to what happened on the flight and his opinion on, on it. And because of that, he's been suspended from the wrestling promotion he's in. Mm. Now, I'm going to play devil's advocate here. I generally, I feel bad for the flight attendant. I really do. I think mm -hmm. she didn't see it as a joke, and you know, yeah, she's you know she's gone to she's gone to bed, not been able to sleep. All that kind of stuff. Hear me out. Well, I've got a but, point. But go on. Yeah, but she's settled in court, didn't she, for quite a lot of money. I didn't say how much it was, but for a lot of money. Mm -hmm. Now, we previously found out that she got arrested before the flight for stealing jewellery. It was it was after the flight. I think it was like, it was before the documentary. Yeah. So, yeah, she stole £80,000 worth of jewellery. Wow. And a bailout for her. So she, she must need money. I guess that's why she's done the documentary. Why is she... Right, there's a few points with the stewardess thing. Yeah. I, I do feel sorry for her. Why was she the only one in charge of all the drunken wrestlers? Yeah? Well, why... There was, there was another few flight attendants, weren't there? But yeah, but know. apparently they were only in first class. They didn't know what anything was going wrong. Right. She's saying Vince McMahon was on... You hear people say he wasn't on. There was a barrier between where all this was going on and Vince McMahon, so he didn't know. There's so people having to go with Vince McMahon, but I've got a point on that as well. <laughs> so, for one, why why did she feed them alcohol for seven hours and think everything's going to be all right? To her argument, she said that they were going to get it anyway. Like No, you still give it to them. You're in charge. You're, you're a barman. If I come in and I can't hardly walk, are you going to give me a drink? No matter how much I throw at you. You probably will because it's me, but if you don't don't know me. Yeah. You, you don't you don't give them any more drink. I've never I know it's a private flight. I've never been on a plane and they start seven alcohol before you even take off. Seven this, hours are on one it was, it was three trolleys worth of full bottled alcohol not the little yeah, ones never never ever happened yeah there were four bottles as well weren't they weren't, weren't they? that's crazy what did she think was going to happen um so there's that and then there's why didn't she get i know like she's probably in a bad position just leave that area go to first class and go 
All right, there's a couple of you here. Can you come and help me out with these lot? Because they're a bit. Yeah. I mean, the captain got the captain got involved. However, yeah. what I don't get as well with the documentary, why is it only her talking from the staff? There's no other S units talking about that, and the, the pilot's not talking about that. Obviously, no one from WWE is talking about that because they've kind of brushed under the carpet. The other point, good question. People are having a go at Vince McMahon going, Well, why didn't he sort them out? He's put someone in charge to be in charge of the wrestlers. The person he's put in charge is JR. Yeah. I mean, you don't go to, I don't know, McDonald's. And want to speak to the owner of McDonald's, do you? You speak to the boss of that McDonald's. Yeah. The owner doesn't know what's going on in the restaurants. It's not, that's not, why would he pay JR to like be in charge of the wrestlers and then have to sort it himself? I mean, there's a lot going on in there. <laughs> it's terrible, isn't it? That's just, it's just, I mean, that, I thought, I thought that, I thought... that story has always been like legend what's going on in that. And it's always been kind of light-hearted, and this has just made it kind of like, that's not good. The Brock Lesnar thing baffles me. Because yeah, the, is... the fallout, there's nothing, no one's said anything about the Brock Lesnar incident. Yeah. Um, to me, that doesn't seem like Brock Lesnar. Obviously, I don't know him, but from what I've heard about his character and kind of, him in real life. It just but seems it's, big for him. It was when he was first starting, isn't it? So it's 2002, so he's only just coming into the sort of scene. Surely at that point he was, yeah, cocky, but not wanting to you yeah. know, stand up too much. Um, get fired or, you know, put himself in a bad position. Mm, I don't know. The only thing I've seen, like, I watched Raw just before we've come on, and... Um, They've taken Ric Flair off the introduction. His merch has gone off the website as well. Hmm. I mean, they've done that before. I, I, just, I don't know. I don't know what the deal is. Yeah, it's. I mean, like I said, it's a very thought-provoking documentary. Uh, um, there's a lot going on. There's been on. a few with the Dark Side of the Ring episodes. There is a few in there, and they're quite like I said at the start. I think they're always a bit anti WWE for some reason. It's like whoever's in charge of it's got a bit of a vendetta against them. Do you know what I mean? There's never any, there's never any episodes about stuff that's going on in WCW. This one though packed quite a punch. Like it had yeah um, severe. Well, this is, yeah, this is a uh, new, it's really got in all the news things, hasn't it? It's quite bad. Um, but, you know, as you've seen with other people, you can't always trust your heroes. Yeah. I mean, I, I'm a big Ric Flair fan, but it, it makes me question what he's like. But I, I kind of... So I've talked about this to Freya. She never watched the episode, but I explained everything that was in it. And I was like, that's not on, is it? And she's like, no, no. She, and then I told her the punishments, and I went, so this guy got drugged without him knowing. And they had to take him off in a wheelchair. And he got sacked. And she was like, what do you mean he got sacked? I was like, he got sacked. She went, you're right. And then she said, what about Ric Flair? And <laughs> it's just like, mm, he got put in the Hall of Fame. <laughs> <laughs> he got a retirement match. It was bizarre. Like, and I, I just don't understand what he's got. Because you think of things that other things have happened. WD, WWE just pretends they've never existed. Yeah. So it'd be interesting what comes out. <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> it's on YouTube and on Vice TV. I'd definitely give it a watch. It is it's yeah, good, good documentary. I mean, they've got a few good episodes. I mean, I'm not. I don't really like the episode because it was a bit. It's like seeing your heroes 
be villains in it. You just don't want to say it. But I suppose, you know, it's interesting to know. Mm. It's just interesting who was left out of the stories as well. It's a bit... Because surely Undertaker and Stone Cold were on that flight because they were in that pay-per-view. Yeah. Even the year after. Oh, I feel like Undertaker would have stepped up and said, guys, enough. And he was quite a leader of the locker room, so surely people would have gone, right, yeah, Mark has, has said, the Undertaker has said, we need to stop, we need to stop. Mm. Do you think Vince was on that plane? I don't. It's, it's, I mean, he must have been. Yeah, surely. But I don't get why some wrestlers come out and said he wasn't. I mean, he's probably in, Undertaker was probably in first class with him and Stone Cold, and they've never seen any of it. No, Undertaker said on the Stone Cold documentary that it was first class, and then when the barrier was, he was the first seat, so he could stretch his legs out. Right. So he would have been in there with all the hooliganism. I mean, when they're talking about the fight with Mr. Perfect and Brock Lesnar, that must have been scary. Yeah. How was the play not, not rocking? Because Brock, Brock Lesnar's a heavy guy. I imagine pushing Brock Lesnar to the door. Well, it's when they went on the emergency door and they all mm. thought he was going to smash open. Imagine that. <laughs> Well, they would all be dead, wouldn't they? Yeah. I mean, the, the air pressure been on over the Atlantic as well. Yeah. It's just crazy. Well, have you ever seen the um, class of '99 with Derry Beckham and you know, you know the the whole Alex Ferguson team? Yeah. So in that, Beckham and Ryan Giggs are talking about they put. They put an, a young, like a youth player, in like a massive sack or something, and like rolled him down a hill. <laughs> so something okay. like that. And Dave Beckham was saying it was really bad. Obviously, we wouldn't do that now, but back then, yeah, that's like, that's the initiation that he did. Mm. I, I can't remember the gist of it, but yeah, they put someone in like some kind of container and chucked him down, you know, like a slope, <laughs> whatever. And it's that, it's that same kind of thing, you know, back then. Like, you think about all the old programs that we used to watch. Mm. There was a lot of, like, like casual racism and just, like, you know, like just stuff they just would not get away with. And it's just, obviously, we've come a long way. And I think, as well, you think, mm -hmm. like, even, like, lad culture, when you think how bad lad culture was, yeah, it's so, like, sexist and, you know. Yeah. And that wasn't that long ago. You're talking no, like no. early 2000s, it's when this was happening. Yeah. Um, yeah, luckily we've moved on a lot. Yeah. Um, I mean, I was never really into all that. Anyway, I think, I see, I grew up with three sisters, so I was always quite realising well, women are, are humans as well. I had five <laughs> brothers. Yeah. So, five brothers will, uh, yeah. But, yeah. So that's that side of the ring. I want to know what people think of it as well. I want to know what people's thoughts are. Yeah, I mean, to be honest with you as well, just talking to the dark side of the ring, after the first season, I thought, they're going to run out of stuff to talk about, but <laughs> there's, there's loads. Yeah. Um, there's so much There's so much to talk There's going to be about the... Um, because they give you sort of highlights of what's to come up. They're going to talk about the the exploding ring match that Mick Foley and Terry Funk had, which should be interesting. Yeah. See, I, I like ones like that, where you're talking about matches and mm. sort of backstage things. Um, they'll be interesting. Uh, yeah, that's that's of the ring. Should we talk about the current product at the minute? Well, we're... Oh, God. Well, wait. Where, where do we start? Let's get... Yeah, it's getting exciting. I know you're talking about WWE being... I mean, it's dreadful at the minute. However, AEW are packing the punches big time, aren't they? Since we've last been on. So AEW, when they first started, it was really inconsistent. 
Oh, they've got some big names. They're firing on all cylinders. Yeah, and they, you know what I mean? I think WWE actually, for the first time, are actually in trouble. Well, it's the, it's the Monday Night Wars again. They're packing the big guns because, like I said, I've just watched Raw. I mean, I'll say it's a spoiler, but if you watch Raw, you should have watched it by now when this goes out. They, one, they've kind of made a mistake for me in that they announced a match on SmackDown, which was going to be the New Day against Roman Reigns and the Usos, which is a big match. That should be a pay per view match. They announced it for Raw. So I'm watching Raw thinking, oh, that'll be the main event. No, it was the first match. So this is the mistake they're making. Like, surely. If I'm booking Raw, and I know I've got that match to put on, why would you put it on first? People are just going to watch Story that line. and then turn over. Storyline, that's a big match, mm. isn't it? You show that I'll put it on last. You've got a three-hour show. You want people to stick around for three hours, put it on last. They did, it. They did a, a hockey finish where, uh, what's his name? Chip... Who did Big E just win the belt off? Was it Shelton Benjamin? Shelton Benjamin. He came in and interrupted the match. So the main event was a triple threat. It was Big E against them and Roman Reigns, which was a good match. I just think it would have been better because it was the new day reforming as the new day. It was mm. quite good. Um, I mean, it's the first... It's the first week I've watched Raw and SmackDown because I just thought they're against the ropes here. What they're going to do? It's, to be fair, that's probably the biggest thing they could have done was bring you a bit back. But well, Extreme Rules is round the corner. Mm -hmm. I'm going to watch that, expecting something big, because Vince needs to pull his finger out. He did it with Monday Night Wars when he bought the company, the rival company, and that you know that. The invasion was awesome, so good. Now he needs to do something. I feel like the next two events are quite crucial. See, AEW's got an advantage in that they're trying to do what WCW were doing, but they know what mistakes WCW made. Mm. That's a big advantage when you, you know what not to do. And the, yeah. I mean, the same CM Punk. Daniel Bryan. Yeah. Uh, Ru uh, Ruby Riot. She's actually got a voice. <laughs> she was so good on it. What's she called now? She's called Ruby something. Ruby Soho, she's called now. Um, I mean, I liked her in WWE. I just think she wasn't given much of a chance. She's got a great look, hasn't she? And she's a good well, that's wrestler. That's what happened with so many wrestlers. Just didn't get a chance, didn't get the right opportunity. Mm. Definitely. Um, you know, you've got Rusev over there. Yeah, I can't, I don't know what his new name is. It's bad, I don't know. <laughs> um, yeah, they've got the big guns. Mm. Uh, I just, I mean, we we didn't do SummerSlam, but SummerSlam was so confusing for me. It I, wasn't bad, I, to be fair. No, I just... The thing that annoys me with it is the Bianca Belair getting squashed by Becky Lynch. Yeah. Becky, Becky Lynch had to win the match, but in the time that she did, it was, she, was pretty You funny. could have had an amazing match. Why do it for 20 seconds? You're not telling a story. They're so bad at not telling stories now. Well, it used to be what they used to do. Yeah. Bianca Belair deserves more than a 20-second match. Um, like I said, I'm going to hold out to the next two pay per views. I think they're crucial. Um, back. Um, yeah, you see what they're doing. I mean, the the pulling the big. I mean, they they pulled the big guns by getting Brock Lesnar back and Becky Lynch. That was their sort of. Yeah, but what else now can they do? What else do they? They can get the rock back, sure, amazing, great, but only for one match. It won't be like for 
Well, you've got Survivor Series coming up, haven't you? Depends what they do with that. Are they going to do, you know, Roman Reigns having a Survivor Series team and he brings back The Rock? See, the F rate, we always do, like, how we would write it. How I would write it is, you do the New Day. I know it'd be a weird Survivor match, but the New Day against Roman Reigns' clan, the Survivor Series, and they have extra people. Uh, I don't know who the New Day would bring back. I mean, they were tag teaming with Finn Balor the other day, so maybe him. But then, what if Roman Reigns brings The Rock back for the match? And The Rock turns on Roman Reigns and then that sets up WrestleMania match. That would be amazing. That'll never happen, though. No, of course it won't, because that's too, that's too good. <laughs> but it's such a simple idea. Why don't they just do that? I'd like to see Paul Heyman turn on Roman Reigns. Yeah, for Brock. No, um, not even for, for Brock, but just, just against Roman. <laughs> Um, you know, we spoke about uh, about um, Roman Reigns being heel, and I said it would work, and it's working. He's doing well with it. I can't see him going back to being a baby face. No, I don't think there's any way back for that. He should have never been a baby face though, because as I as I said to you before, baby faces you kind of feel sorry for them that they're always like not given the opportunity and he was given the opportunities so he, he's definitely a heel yeah um, I mean I don't know what I would feel about Brock Lesnar I'm still a bit like what are you doing here <laughs> <clears throat> should we talk about your wedding it was a good wedding weren't it <laughs> um how do you feel any different being married? Um, not really. I felt a little bit richer because I was paying for like you know, um, wedding dresses, photographer, everything. So, yeah. A good day, wasn't it? <laughs> yeah. Well, we haven't actually spoke about the stag do on here either. Stag do was good. Yes, yeah, so we the dress was wrestlers. Our dress was RVD. He was Kane. It was good. We went to uh, the two in Newcastle. Good night, I wanna. I'd like to go there yeah, again well. when everything's a bit more normal. Yeah, the weather, weather was so warm as well. Yeah, it was, wasn't it? Because it was like August, wasn't it? You can actually see some uh, pictures and uh, some videos in a, <laughs> in a clip on our YouTube page that I put together. So Talking about wrestling, because we wrestled that, uh, obviously, each other, and you realise how much things hurt. But as a segue, we went to PCW's 10th anniversary. Yeah. And... This was the night before the wedding. Yeah, it was kind of like a stag do, but it was only us two, wasn't it? <laughs> <laughs> um, so it was a great night. I really enjoyed it, you know. Um Definitely want to go to another one. It's just so different, isn't it, British wrestling? So, like, yeah. it's just, it's just bizarre. Do you, do you know what it reminds me of? You know that? Have you ever seen that clip where you might have seen it on Facebook where it goes like a typical night out in an English pub, and it's just random people in a pub. Yeah. Do you know the one I'm on about? It's I like so. that, and it? it's so random. Um, I mean, it's great. I don't know what to expect because I've only ever been to one PCW before and it was a free free event and it had like Scott to all there. It was good. That's just unreal. I enjoyed it all. My, However, my favourite one was when they did um, Preston t like outside the town hall outside the library mm. fighting and they went into home bargains. Yeah. I think sure that was bad. So the first match was... Um, what did they call a tag team? Turmoil. Turmoil. So it's like a winner stays on kind of thing. So the first match was... The Hooligans. The Hooligans, which is... Who, 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 who. <laughs> obviously Zach, who's been on here. 
against I can't remember against it doesn't matter however the hooligans have like a thing where the last people in the crowd if they want to get a chest slap now, maybe me, I was just like, no, I don't want a chest slap. I'm just saying, be quiet. <laughs> Kieran, Dean Kieran, Phil a bit, puts his hands up. He gets a chest slap. It and then, Yeah. And then, <laughs> I mean, it was some noise. Yeah. And then you were meant to get two. And then Zach, I mean, you were, you were like the front of four person. That's what was happening to, weren't you? Yeah. So, you know, he's slapping all these guys and they're getting louder each time. <laughs> and then Kieran gets one. And then Zach noticed that Kieran's got a pacemaker scar. So Zach goes, No, you can't get another one, it's dangerous. And he sets Just a it down. Disclaimer, I wouldn't have gone up if I knew. No, I knew <laughs> I knew my body. I knew I could I could take one at least. <laughs> so Zach was like, No, no, I'm not no, no more. And then they nominated um, you. Yeah, he nominated me. And I've never been hit in my life like that before. I think what was worse, he put the shot over my head so I don't know what was coming. And you can kind of just hear the crowd going, ooh, and then wham. And it was so loud. I don't know how loud it sounded to you, but to me, it's it, definitely. It was very loud. And it was instantly stinging. Like, and I think I was shaking a little bit because I was like, oh, <laughs> I, was so, so, I, couldn't, I couldn't breathe. Anyway, so I've got oh, that was just at the start of the night, and I've got like what so was that? Like, what seven o'clock, right? Seven. <laughs> yeah, it finished at quarter past ten. So we get home, um, we're buying a few beers, and that we bought a few beers, didn't we? Mm -hmm. And I look at my chest, and it is bright red still. It looked like it just been done. Um, on the Sunday, by the way, it started to bruise. <laughs> um, I had this massive red handprint there like I was doing me the people um, yeah sore them chest yeah. laps are not fake when you see wrestlers get a chest lap they're getting a chest lap there's no way you can cushion that one is fun anymore is, is enough for me. I mean the dead one to the referee and I don't know if you noticed but the referee most of the night kept being like ow yeah <laughs> Uh, but it's a great match. The main event was really good. They put on a good show, BCW, didn't they? Yeah, they always do. Yeah. yeah. Um, you can see why they've been going 10 years. I can imagine they'll go 10 more. Yeah. It's quite a full crowd as well. Yeah, it was. Um, the PCW crowd was always so good. Uh, <laughs> I mean, the best moment, which is going to sound weird when we say, it, say this, but they did a raffle. And it's probably one of the funniest things I've ever seen, Kieran. <laughs> right, yeah. So the the, the announcer comes up into the ring, and he do, you know he does that thing where he sets his up and sings. Yeah. Right? So he pulls out a number from a raffle, number two eight six. Nobody. He goes, right, okay, I'll call another one. That's fine. One zero two. <laughs> Nobody. <laughs> this is a bit of a joke now. Pulls out another one. Nobody calls for it. And everyone's going, you can't raffle. You can't raffle. And that's an amazing thing I love about British wrestling. The chants are just so good. Yeah. They're so like, there was somebody that looked like, um, what's his face from Harry Potter? Uh, I don't know. Draco, Ma Draco, Ma Draco Malfoy, wasn't it? And they were like, yeah. Yeah. Sorry, go on. Yeah, so they were saying lots of Harry Potter quotes to us, yeah. weren't they? Yeah. Right, well, um, um, and then so what then a, wrestler, a wrestler ran it, ran in, didn't they? Because it wasn't going well. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, and it was, <laughs> the raffle was a right shod. <laughs> so, yeah, so a wrestler ran in. Because that's, I mean, it was amateur hour. The raffle tickets were in, like, a paint glass. <laughs> it wasn't was fancy. Was yeah. Oh, yeah, it was a jug, like a pitcher. And uh, so this wrestler runs in and, like, pours it out all over the ring and picks one up and they say the number and no one's got the ticket still. I, I think he picked, like, three, didn't he? Mm. So the crowds are getting better. I was like, you can't raffle. 
Um, and then this was just before the main event. So mm. the, the announcer was trying to clean up the tickets <laughs> before the main event. And then, so he's trying to do it by hand and it's taken him ages because there's about yeah. a couple hundred tickets. And he's saying to the bar staff, have you got a broom? Anyone got a broom? Have you got a broom, anyone? <laughs> so, and nobody responds. Uh, he's doing it by hand. And then yeah. someone comes behind me, like just this young girl who works at the venue with a broom. And I go, broom! <laughs> everyone goes, broom, broom, broom. 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 <laughs> and then people were chanting, this is sweeping. <laughs> <laughs> Bless <laughs> <laughs> us, sweeping. <laughs> oh um, god, uh, it was comical. Honestly, yeah, I think you on a, I was crying, laughing. Um, I mean, the main event was amazing. It's just, it's just a bizarre. There was a match where it was like an opera singer, a drag yes, queen. He's, he's really good. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um he looks like stage show Bob. Um Opera really Mania. Random. He's like Opera a slash Mania. between Weird Al and Stage Show Bob. He's really good though. Yeah, he's jacked as well, isn't he? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, but yeah, yeah, it was a good night. If um, you get to go to PCW or any independent wrestling show in the UK, definitely go. They're so good. Yeah, I think people worry that they're not gonna know anyone. I don't think you need to. I don't know anyone at PCW, really. Only know is Zach, I think. Yeah, but that's the good thing about British wrestling. You know, you have this obvious, the heel and the baby face. You know, yeah, you know exactly who you should be cheering for and booing for. Um, yeah, it was really good. Looking forward to them being in Blackpool. Yeah. Let's see where it goes. Uh, what else has been happening? Well, I think we should probably leave it there and uh, continue <laughs> our tea talk next week. Yeah. We uh, like now. I said, we've, we're coming up with some content today. Hopefully, Kieran's not too busy now. Um, no, I shouldn't be now. <laughs> I just had my, my mini moon. Yeah, oh yeah. You went to London. Eh? I see, I was in London the week before you as well. Yeah, it's, it's, it's amazing London, isn't it? Yeah. <laughs> well, uh, yeah. But yeah, so uh, I don't know when I'm uploading this, but I've uploaded that you're watching it. I have got unboxing videos to upload. Kieran keeps telling me about. I have filmed them. I've just not had a chance to upload them. So what I'm going to do is clump them all together. I think this free, so we'll call it a triple threat. And I'll put them all together and then I'll start doing them weekly again. Because there's if some good stuff watching, If you are watching this on our YouTube channel... Make sure you like, subscribe, and comment. And tell your friends. Yeah. Tell a friend. <laughs> it's good to talk. <laughs> um, yeah. Uh, we have got podcasts to listen to, which are available. Some good ones on there still. You know, the interview with Zach. Uh, yeah. Marty Jones. Marty Jones, that's a good Radse. one. Uh, all quite interesting. I mean, they are available to watch as well, if you want, on our channel. Yeah, give us a like, subscribe. Merchandise is available also. <laughs> um, yeah, until next week. Until next week. See you then. Right.